I would have not just chased the goal, I would have chased the new belief system first. One of the biggest reasons why you're unhappy is because deep down you know what you want. One of my brain tattoos that I've become very well known for is no one will believe in you until you believe in you. I'm David. Welcome to Wise Vibes. Mistakes are the portals of discovery. It's a quote by James Joyce. Mistakes are an important part of life. It's what we do after and how we move forward from that mistake, whether we want to create happiness, health, or wealth. So in this video, I'm going to share some tips of how to create more wealth and how to not be broke from very brilliant minds. First up is change your mindset by Lisa Nichols. I would have stopped being afraid sooner and earlier that greatness and abundance and wild success was available to someone that looked like me, someone that came from my background, someone that had my educational foundation, which was I'm functionally dyslexic. I struggled in school. I would have still given myself permission sooner to have a breathtaking, abundant life. While I was transforming my life, I still kept this sense of disbelief. And so I know that I slowed myself down a lot because until I believed it was for me, it couldn't really come into my, into my, into my hemisphere. It couldn't come into my life. So I would have done more work on my mindset earlier. I would have not just chased the goal. I would have chased the new belief system first. Well, I hope that some of my mistakes, um, based on what I didn't know, helps you to know some things sooner, quicker, faster, or that it just helps to validate that you're not alone <laughs> in your thinking. I don't ever try to be perfect. I, I, I just want to perfectly manage my imperfection. Number two is Don't Empower the Problem by Eric Thomas. Don't empower the problem, all right? You're making it bigger than what it is. All right, so I, I apologize, but I gotta go back just a little bit, all right? Listen to me very closely. When I think about my father, that was like one of the, you know, the biggest challenges of my life, one of the biggest problems of my life. Let me tell you guys what I did wrong. I remember, I was probably about 18 or 19 years old when it first, when I first was like, boom, I'm about to tackle this problem. I remember, I was about 18, 19 in college. I had just left a, a, a worship experience and I was feeling it like, forgive, like for real. My man was talking about forgiveness and I was like, yup, this is it, this is it, I'm about to do it, right? And I don't remember what happened, but I told you somehow, I empowered the problem. I start thinking about all the negative. If I call, what's going to happen if I call and he ignore me? Or what if you don't answer my phone call? Or what if he pick up the phone and, 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 and he don't want to be bothered? Or what if I go all the way to Chicago and, and he don't want to really deal with the problem? I, God, I start immediately, I start thinking about all the negative. As soon as I had the, the, the energy and the strength to say, I'm going to deal with this, this is over. This is it. It will never happen again. Guys, I remember picking up the phone, trying to make the phone call, and I had got so much anxiety. I had got so overwhelmed that I, I hung up the phone. I remember 25 years old. I came at it again. I'm in Chicago for Christmas. I'm walking up the stairs. My man is, somehow we get there at the same time. We walking up the stairs and I speak, right? And then I, I go in the house and the phone rings and I pick up the phone and somebody says they want to speak to their father. And I'm like, okay, I put it all together and then come to find out it was my sister. And once again, I, <laughs> I got overwhelmed. I, 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 as we were walking up the stairs, I was saying, this is it. I'm about to build a relationship with my father. This is it. I'm about to handle, I'm about to deal with it. I'm about to overcome this thing, this monkey on my back, this elephant that's in the room. I'm about to deal with it and move on with the rest of my life. And when my sister called and I pick up that phone, I just was overwhelmed. I had another brother come in and another brother come in. I got overwhelmed and I didn't do it. I said I was going to do it. I said I was going to overcome it. I could have been where I am five years ago. Five years earlier, I could have been E.T. the hip hop preacher. And so I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this traveling. I'm doing all this speaking, but I've got this issue that's, that's overwhelming me that I can't get past. And then finally at 30, I dealt with it. Listen to me. This is the principle for the day. You got to do me a huge favor. I don't care how hard it is. Do not ignore the problem. 
because guess what? It ain't going away. It ain't going nowhere. And that's what I did. I tried to ignore it. I tried to ignore it. I tried to tell myself, it's okay. You don't need him in your life. It's okay. It ain't that deep. You ain't got to deal with that. It's okay. Look, you're doing good for yourself. You're in college. You got a family. You got a wife and a child. You're going to be all right. You don't need to do, deal with that. You're a pretty good speaker. You're about to finish the university soon. You, it's okay. You got a relationship with your mom and you got, you got a relationship with your homeboys. You, 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 you got a relationship with the people at your church. You go, you're doing all right, E.T. You don't got, you don't got to do that. You can, you can live the rest of your life without a, 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 a building a relationship with my man. It's not necessary. Look, I'm not even talking about my father. I'm not even talking about our relationship. I'm talking about a problem in my life. So for you, I don't know what it is, but that problem, you cannot ignore it. Why? It will not go away. It will not go away on its own. It will not. You won't just wake up one day and it won't be there anymore. It's going to be there and it will haunt you for the rest of your life. So I'm telling you from personal experience, deal with it. Deal with it. And the sooner you deal with it and the sooner you overcome it, the sooner you get to your rewards, baby. The sooner you get on the other side of it, the sooner you begin to feel fulfillment. The sooner you get on the other side of self-actualization, your dreams become a reality. The sooner you get on the other side of the problem is a wealth of success. The sooner you deal with the fact that you have test anxiety, deal with it. Number three, take action by Mel Robbins. One of the biggest reasons why you're unhappy is because deep down you know what you want, but you won't allow yourself to have it. And I wanna break this down for you because after coaching millions of people for the last decade, this is a fundamental issue for each and every one of us. So as you go about your life and you scroll through social media, you will inevitably bump into images or people who have the things that you'd like to have, or they're doing the things that you've always dreamt of doing. And instead of using that moment to inspire you to take action, to either learn about the thing you want to be doing, to uh, do the work, to get the things that you want, you're capable of doing those things. But instead of taking action, you make a fatal mistake. We all do this, by the way. You stop and you consider the thing that you want or the thing that you want to do, and then you tell yourself, it'll never happen for me. Right there, you just killed your inspiration, you killed your dream, you killed your goal, you invalidated yourself, you invalidated your desires, you pounded yourself down into the ground and basically said you're not worthy of that thing. And in that second, you just gave up on yourself and on all the things that are actually meant for you in your life. And so what do I want you to do about it? Well, here's what I want you to do about it. I want you to understand that you get to want those things, and you also can have them, but it's gonna require action. And so the next time you find yourself going about your life and you feel that pang inside of you where you're like, gosh, I'd love to have that kind of car, or I'd love to have that kind of house, or I'd love to have that kind of health or mindset, note it, and then remind yourself of a simple truth. I can have that mindset. I can have that car. I can have that lifestyle. I just have to be willing to put in the work. It's that simple. Stop telling yourself it'll never happen for you. Because the reason why it's not happening is because you keep telling yourself it won't. The second you tell yourself it absolutely can happen for me, I just got to do the work, you will flip into a mode of taking action and that's when you'll get it done. And if you're appreciating all the wisdom so far, hit the like button down below and subscribe for more inspirational videos like this. Number four is Walk Into Fear by Robin Sharma. One of my brain tattoos that I've become very well known for is no one will believe in you until you believe in you. And so good people often become seduced by the chatter of their loudest fears. And what I mean by that is we come up with a great idea. Let's say it's to start a project that will allow you to lead your field. Let's say it's an idea for a new product that will allow you to grow a new company. Let's say you come up with an idea for a new painting if you are an artist. Let's say it's an idea that will allow you to take your fitness and your wellness and your longevity to a whole new level of wow. And pretty shortly after you come up with the idea, your ego starts screaming. Because 
we, we are good in our comfort zones, but the moment we start to go blue ocean around our next level of mastery, our fears come up because we're going out into the unknown. It's human. You know, if you were look, to look at the psychobiology of it and you were to study the pure biology of it, there's a term called homeostasis. Human beings are hardwired for a steady state. And that kept us alive. So literally, our heart beats around the same amount, you know, the 72 beats per minute, and our blood pressure is within a small bandwidth, and that allows us to survive. But what happens is when we come up with a new idea and when we see a new opportunity and we start to leave our comfort zones into the zone of the unknown where greatness lives, we get scared. And the true heroes and the true titans and the true masters those people are not fearless. Those are people who have just practiced walking into their fear and living on the razor's edge consistently to the point where they're comfortable amid their discomfort. And that's the great opportunity for you, not to avoid fear, but to be comfortable in the unknown, to be comfortable when you're terrified. And I'm going to give you one more bonus tip that I think you're really going to like. Before I do, I want you to check out this book right here. This is the 50 Day Success Journal. I'm selling it on Amazon. I created this just so people could achieve whatever goal that they want, no matter how big, how small. This journal helps you break down that goal so that you can make it in bite sized chunks and you're held accountable with this journal, the 50 Day Success Journal. So check it out. I have a link to that down in the description below. Next up with the bonus is going to be Start Small by Brendan Bouchard. People say, Brendan, I'm scared to start my dream. I'm like, you're not scared to start your dream. You're embarrassed to be seen starting small. Big difference. It's not about the dream that's freaking you out. It's about how you're going to feel chasing the dream. It's about how you're going to be perceived chasing the dream. It's about how you fear at night it won't turn out the way you wanted. It's not about the dream. It's about how you're processing how it will feel chasing the dream. And once you figure that out, you see that you can rewire yourself. You can teach yourself to think differently about the journey and the process. Because look, you know, no matter how small you start, start something that matters. Start something that brings your life back. You know, start something that makes your heart feel full. Start something that does scare you. Allow that fear, allow that worry, allow that anxiety a little bit because that's just saying you're growing, you're learning, you're changing, you're getting going. But let's be very clear. Most people, what they're really scared about is being embarrassed. Well, I don't know if I quit my job and I start this thing, what do my coworkers think when I do that? I don't know if I start this, what are my friends gonna say when they see me playing small and not doing big things because every big project starts with small little tasks that don't look sexy. Oh, what's, it, what's everyone gonna think about me that I chose this route when the other thing was over here and that was a better choice? What people are scared about is being rejected or more, being embarrassed. I tell people all the time, don't be embarrassed to start small. I, th I think about when I started doing videos, you know, it wasn't, you know, we're at 200 million video views now. We, I mean, tell you what, we, when I started, I was okay with the fact that it was like 10 people watched my videos, you know, nine of them was my mom on a different browsers probably hitting refresh to make me feel better about myself, you know? Like, I accepted the fact that starting small was part of the game. Instead of bemoaning that, I honored that process. I said, that is part of it. Being small in a big pond with big fish is part of the game. And only until you keep playing, keep moving, keep building, do you ever become one of the big fish. You have to be okay with being small. And so if you start your channel or you start your thing and only 100 people watch it, hey, that's 100 people who heard your message. That's 100 people who you help. That's 100 people who you change your mindset for. That's 100 people who let you do your own thing and watch. And even if they were haters, at least you started penetrating their mind. Get in the game. Never be embarrassed about starting small or scrappy or crappy because that's part of the journey. It's supposed to be that way. So don't fear it. Acknowledge that's part of it. I'm going to honor that. Let's go. 
And I'm going to leave you with one quote before you go. Your life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change by Jim Rohn. So what change can you make in your life today to make your life better? Moving forward, it doesn't matter what happened in the past. It only matters what's going on in this moment and your mindset in this moment. Take action when you have the momentum behind you. If you want to check out any more inspirational videos, you could click up here or down here and I'll see you in the next video. Have an amazing day.